Britain's asylum system is broken after years of political neglect. Thousands are caught in the middle. Dangerous small boat journeys bring thousands of migrants across the English Channel each year. But critics say the government response has only made the problem worse. London CNN on a chilly Tuesday night at London's busy Victoria Station, a bus dropped off a group of 11 people, some wearing flip-flops and without coat, and drove away. They, are, they were cold, hungry, stressed, and disorientated, according to homelessness charity Under One Sky, whose team spotted the group and provided assistance. The individuals had nowhere to go until a home office of employee was alerted and found the group emergency hotel accommodation. The group was made up made up of asylum seekers who had been staying at Man Manston Migrant Processing Center in Kent, Southern England, a facility that charities and lawmakers say has become overclouded and descended into their and inhumane living conditions. According to the Home Office, officers were under the impression that the 11 individuals had accommodation arranged in London. London Mayor Sadiq Khan said it was shameful they were abandoned in the center of the city, calling it a completed, complete failure of duty and leadership. But the incident is emblematic of Britain's dra dramatically overwhelmed system for dealing with asylum seekers and illegal migrants. The number of asylum claims processed in the UK has collapsed in recent years, leaving people in limbo for months and years, trapped in processing facilities or temporary hotels and unable to work, and fearing an intractable intractable debate about Britain's borders. The system is broken. Britain's Home Secretary, Suella Braverman, told the Parliament on Monday. In an inarguable but jarring ad admission after 12 years of a conservative rule, which has seen an unending line of ministers promising and failing to clamp down on illegal migration. The situation at the Manston processing facility is a breach of humane conditions, a conservative lawmaker said. Braverman blamed on a rapid increase in small boat crossings across the English Channel organized by people smugglers on mainland Europe. The beleaguered minister describes the crossings in highly charged team comes as an invasion of Britain's south coast. Let's stop pretending that they are all refugees in distress, she said. But the chaos facing migrants and asylum seekers in the UK is also the result of the decade of political choices, with the funding and action failing to match the heavy-handed rhetoric espoused by successive conservative government. It's a shame bully and it's cruel, cruel, Ben Lama Nascar, Ma Lama Nauskas, a research economist at Oxford University and advisor to religious truth, so while the previous prime minister was secretary of state for international trade, told the CNN about the country's system to deal with the asylum seekers. Part of that is due to the culture set by the Home Office which views most immigrants with suspicions, suspicion and treat them like potential criminals. Lama Nauskas said, it's a deeply unfair and unjust, un unjust system. The Home Office did not respond directly to that charge when approached by CNN, but said in a statement, the number of people arriving in the UK who require accommodation has reached record levels and has put our asylum system under incredible strain. Small boat crossings rise. Another striking glimpse 
into the lives of immigrants within Britain's processing facilities came flying over the fence from within the Manston facility this week. We are in the difficult life now. We feel like we were in prison. Read a lit letter of apparently written by a young girl and stop it inside a bottle that was, was then thrown towards assembled journalist. Some of us are very sick. That's some women that are pregnant. We, they don't do anything for them. We really need your help. Please help us. The letter reads. The situation at the Silden Processing Center is a breach of humane conditions. Conservative lawmaker Roger Gale told the Sky News Monday as dozens of charities wrote to the Prime Minister to raise concerns over overcrowding. The facility is currently holding around 4,000 people, among them women and children, despite being intended to only hold 1,500, Gale said. Immigration Minister Robert Jen- Jenrick later told the Sky News that some people at the s- center were sleeping on the floor. The letter thrown, thrown inside the bottle over the fence at Manston. He claimed the root cause of what we are seeing at Manston is not the government, but the growing number of migrants traveling across the channel onto England's shores. Those numbers have shot up in recent years. 38,000 people have arrived in the UK by small boat this year. Of from 28,000 last year and less than 2,000 in 2019, according to Home Office data. The crossings are the relatively new prom- phenomenon, which emerged after thousands of migrants hoping, hoping to cross into England spent months and years in the so-called Calais jungle, a sprawling settlement on the northern coast of France guarded by French and British border offices. In late 2018, a couple of boats successfully navigated the channel, giving rise to the to a small cottage industry of smugglers. Rob McNeil, the deputy director of the Migra- Migration Observ- Observative, told the CNN, not only did it work, but because it was a very visible spectacle, it became very prominent in the British public discourse. It was a front page news, he said, and so it became visible to other people that this was a successful technique. Instead of having a bottleneck at Calais, you certainly, suddenly had a shower head with multiple little nozzles across the French coast from which people could launch dangerous journeys in dangerous and small vessels. McNeil said, that's much harder to police. The number of arrivals in the UK remains relatively low com- compared to EU member states. Last year, Britain ranked the fourth in total asylum applications and ninth in per capita claims among European countries, according to the Migration Observative, Observatory. But while the government has pointed the finger at increased crossings for overrunning the country's asylum network, it has done little to reduce their impact on the UK, and the attorney of ministerial decisions have made the disruption worse for broad Britons and migrants alike. The speed at which asylum claims are processed has slumped remarkably in recent years. 87% of claims received an initial decision within six months in the second quarter of 2014, according to the Migration Observatory. But seven years later, that figure was just 6%. The fall comes after the government scrapped it scrapped its six-month target in mid-2019. It means migrants were being housed in temporary accommodation and hotels while waiting to hear news on their claim. 
a policy at which braver men has repeatedly lashed out. A Home Office spokesperson told CNN there are there are currently more than thirty seven thousand asylum seekers in hotels, so costing the UK taxpayer five point six million euro pound. Six point thirty-five million dollars a day. Many migrant experts point the finger that for that bill, squarely back at the government. The Home Office has clearly made decisions about the allocation of resources, which have impacted on processing speed. McNeil said, "If asylum seekers' claims were processed more quickly and more effect- efficiently." Then the system would not be snowed up in the way that it is, and the human experiments experience of these people would be less unpleasant. While at the same time, the cost to the tax- taxpayer would be considerably considerably lower. He added, "This issue has not benefited anybody. It is important this asylum backlog back- backlog is addressed as a matter of some urgency." If the government wants to take charge of the situation, search for solutions. To to date, the government policy, a deal to deport, deport to some migrants to Rwanda, has been bogged down in legal appeals and failed to transport a single person in the seven months since it was announced. It clearly isn't working, and it hasn't acted as the deterrent in any way to other asylum seekers, Lama Nauskas said. Surrounding the Rwanda plan has been continued the swirl of provocative language on illegal migration, which the government argues underpins a strong stance, but critics say it is say is di- di- divisive and. Crucial towards those escaping war in a stop instability or or persecution. What the government has done through this rhetoric over the past few years is trying to merge in people's minds, asylum seekers and illegal migrants, as part of the quite conscious attempt to su- suggest all asylum seekers are inherent inherently illegal. Kim Bale, a professor of politics at Queen Mary University in London, and the author of books on the Conserv- Conservative Party, told the CNN, "An inflatable craft carries migrants across the England Channel." But there are at least a partial solutions to the UK's seemingly intact- intractable illegal migration crisis. Experts be- believe. As well as pro- prioritizing the processing of claims by boosting funding and creating new centers around the country, Britain could ditch a rule that asylum applications must be made on UK soil, allowing allowing people to apply at embassies before they complete a lengthy journey through Europe and across the Channel. And the current rule that bars asylum seekers from work- working for one year should be loosened to help people provide for themselves and contribute to the economy. Critics say, "It's madness. We we were keeping people in poverty, which leads to crime. They don't have anything to do to spend their time, which is not good for them and bad for local communities." Lau Nasskas said. Sweden, Canada, and Australia are among countries that allow asylum seekers to work immediately. While in the U. S. United States, the wait is six months. The political trade-off for all the heavy-handed rhetoric of successive conservative governments or political calculation is also at play. It's never done the Conservative Party any harm. Since the beginning of the 1960s, to have immigration on people's mind, Bail said, during its 12 years in power, a period largely dominated by Brexit and claims by its supporters that the UK could take back control of its borders, the conserv- Conservatives have repeatedly sought 
to paint the opposition Labour Party as Remainers who would be soft on migration. That imperative means solving Britain's illegal migration conundrum, conundrum may not yield the political dividends the party is looking for, particularly as it struggles to get a handle on Britain's economic crisis. If you can't deliver the people in their pocket, then this is a user for distraction, Bale said. Still, even on traditionally fruitful domain, it remains increasingly possible the Conservative Party will run out of road. There is always the trade-off between it bringing in the news and the voters bring, beginning to think the government lost control, Bill said. Opinion polls suggest the voters are losing faith in the Conservatives to tackle the issue of immigration, a trend which in the past has left the party battling to fend off criticism from insurgent right-wing parties that it hasn't done enough to reduce arrivals. That's the dynamic facing Rishi Sunak, Britain's new prime minister who has readily embraced the Rwanda plan and spent much of his early political capital defending his home secretary, Braver Man, as she decries the UK's broken asylum system. After 12 years of harsh words, Worse, and as the human impact on asylum seekers in Britain begins to ship out of facilities like a Manston, Sunak risks quickly losing the trust of Britons, Britons on all sides of the migration debate. We have got to the point where people are entitled to ask, if it's broken, who broke it, Bill said.